Welcome to First Congregational Church in Guilford, Connecticut. We are fond of saying whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And just so you know, if you do come to the physical sanctuary, bundle up, because it will be chilly. For our windows remain open, we continue to be masked and distanced. We want to take care of each other and love our neighbors as ourselves as we watch COVID numbers go up and down in our community and beyond. So may you be safe, may you be alert and aware as we go forth in these days. This morning, our new interim associate minister, Jeanette Hicks, will be offering a word from Luke chapter four, verses 21 through 30. Hear now the scripture. Then he began to say to them, today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him, and they were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son, Jesus? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote me a proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do you also in your hometown these things that you have done in Capernaum? And he said to them, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many windows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Let Elijah was sent to none of them except to a window in Sidon. There were also many with leprosy in Israel in the time of the prophet Elijah and none of them were cleansed except for Nahum, the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of town, and led him over to the bow of the hill in which the town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. May God grant us wisdom and understanding to this complicated text. May we remember that this text is inclusive and larger than just the words that we read today. Amen. Before I begin preaching this morning, I want to explain the subtle accent you will sometimes hear in my voice. It is not that I am from anywhere exotic. I was born in Philadelphia. But uh, four months ago, I did have surgery to have a tumor removed off of a facial nerve, actually two nerves, and that has left me with some paralysis uh, in my tongue and sometimes in my facial expressions. So you are on this journey with me over uh, the next several months to see how slowly my original voice uh, hopefully comes back to me. But now you will not be wondering the rest of the sermon where is she from? I am from here, I live in Guilford. This morning, let's turn our attention though to this lesson from Luke chapter four, verses 21 to 30, which Ginger just read to us. Now, hopefully some of you remember the great radio host, Paul Harvey. Um, he had a daily radio program in which he would tell pieces of a story that you had probably never heard before. And at the end, of these interesting series of facts, he would reveal a famous person or event that was the untold backstory. And he would end each program with his iconic line, and now you know the rest of the story. Well, today in the Gospel of Luke, we have something with a little bit of a Paul Harvey flair because we get the story in multiple pieces. Last week, we had the first installment, a young upstart preacher growing in popularity, returns home to Nazareth, stands up and reads from the prophet Isaiah that the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, to set the oppressed free. At first, the congregation embraces him. Ah, oh, look at Joseph's son. He is doing so well. Listen to how he reads the scripture. They're so proud of Jesus. It seems like a great launch into ministry for him. But as Ginger just read, 
to us, the little known part is the rest of the story. The rest of the story is that the congregation turns on Jesus in anger and chases him out of town. Yes, Jesus, the healer, the teacher, the one who lifts up the lowly, his congregation rejects him and nearly hurls him off the highest cliff in town. That is not the part of the story that I ever heard in Sunday school. How did they go from, we are so proud to let's throw him off the cliff? Well, simply put, Jesus got really preachy. He started preaching about liberating the marginalized justice for the impoverished, imprisoned, and sick. And to do that, he plans to turn the existing economic structures and class systems upside down. Now, Jesus is preaching all of this to the very people who benefit from those systems that he's threatening to take down. And this is not the last time he will anger people with this message. The good news that Jesus spoke was not the good news they expected to hear. And the way that Luke tells the story, it's as if Jesus already anticipated their anger. He knew what was going to happen. He says to the crowd, you taunt me with Dr. Cure Yourself, perform miracles on cue. You want me to be something that I'm not. I am who I am. I'm not going to say what you want to hear. I am not here to make you comfortable and satisfied with your lives or how you've always done things. Because Jesus announces in this Gospel of Luke that he will be a prophet of resistance. In the same tradition as Isaiah and Elijah and Elisha, he is telling his hometown congregation that raised him, love those people you hate, save the people you condemn, embrace the outcasts, challenge the structures that repress and destroy lives. He's preaching release and recovery and restoration. And that was just too much critique and criticism. So Jesus is cast out of town and standing at the edge of the cliff. And now we are really getting to the interesting part of the story. The rest of the story, again, is that this little last surprising bit in verse 30, in spite of the anger and the threats, Jesus passed through the midst of them and went on his way. Now, I love to geek out about language and especially ancient languages, so humor me for a moment because what Luke does is so fascinating. In ancient Greek, there is this unique verb tense that indicates continuous action, like, like the Energizer Bunny, going and going and going. And that is the precise verb tense that Luke uses here, meaning Jesus just didn't go away to the next town, but he continued on and on and on as if indefinitely. So Jesus went on to cast out the demons. He went on to cure Peter's mother. He went on to heal the lepers. He went on to make the lame walk. He went on to talk to the women and the marginalized. He went on to confront systems of power. He went on to trial and on to the cross and on to resurrection. His ministry is actually just beginning here and the rest of his story is in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Through Jesus, God is unfolding a new narrative of radically inclusive love that has no boundaries. It seeks people on the edges and it brings justice to the most unlikely places. Through Jesus, God is refusing to accept the well-worn narratives, refusing to accept complacency and starting to shake things up. That congregation in Nazareth is not so unlike congregations today when our own buttons are pressed. We struggle with how much love God is asking us to give or how many pots God wants us to be stirring or how much our own comfort often comes at the expense of others. And most especially with so many seasons of COVID, we struggle with complacency and exhaustion but that is really the point. The faithful who struggle, we are the real rest of the story. The story is still being written right now. Today among us, God is unfolding the narrative of hope and justice through us. I want you to think of someone you know, making those sacrifices, taking risks, doing the prophetic work. Think of people and ministries that continue to pass through the midst of all this adversity and keep on 
going and going. My clergy colleagues, they are weary. Even the secular news is talking about clergy burnout. We struggle to persevere in the face of so much resistance, so much uncertainty, so much constant change. And we have to learn new tricks and get creative, like making shaky worship videos with our family and pet, pets, perhaps photobombing. Clergy everywhere across all faiths are being backed up to the metaphoric cliff top with the angry crowds wondering how do we hang on. And yet many are pressing on. In my almost seven years now of living in Guildford and just a few weeks of being on staff at First Church, I am impressed with how this congregation continues to carry on the work of Christ. There is this extremely dedicated staff creatively, tirelessly being the church despite great hurdles. Pastoral care, grief work, spiritual nurture, they're still ongoing. There are volunteers and committee members partnering with them and doing the holy work of showing up, being present, making decisions, managing finances, maintaining buildings, beautifying the sanctuary. Even if we have to do this all on Zoom, it is happening. There are meals of comfort being dropped off, cards of caring being sent, amazing musicians that soothe our souls, and so many ministries learning to adapt and still thrive, even though all of us feel at the edge. Every week, over and over, Ginger repeats these words. No matter who you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. These words are grounding all of us. They are echoed in UCC churches every Sunday and they echo the words of the prophets and the inclusive love that Jesus preached. And we have to carry that message on and on. We have to be that verb tense that keeps going and going indefinitely. This moment right now, today, no matter what cliff top or angry crowd we face, no matter what, personal challenges we encounter. This is really, truly the rest of the story, our story. All the unsung saints of First Church prevailing and the broader family of believers beyond still being prophetic in our own time. Take a moment to give thanks for all that continues and all who keep going and going. Take a moment in the next week to express that gratitude. Because while Jesus got away from the angry crowd that day, we all know eventually he was crucified and risen. And we are not promised any easier road than Jesus faced. If you preach, teach, and live with prophetic grace, it will catch up with you. There will be rejection. Luke makes it seem effortless in Jesus. But I don't want to downplay how very hard it is to actually keep on keeping on. It isn't easy to be a human with feelings of hurt, pain, exhaustion, anxiety, so many human emotions we have to overcome. So much of our hard work can go unnoticed. So many good works and small details are attended to. And sometimes it is outright rejected and other times subtly ignored or underappreciated. Being part of this prophetic work of Christ, it comes with costs and risks and we have feelings. But the lesson in Luke is that like Jesus, we develop the capacity to pass through rejection and still be on our way. We are part of a new redeeming story, and the prophetic wisdom of Jesus goes on and on with us in spite of us. We are passing through the midst and going on our way so that we can bring Christ's light into dark and unlikely places and make a just world for all. And all of God's people said, Amen.